Thank you so much, Halima. And yeah, what what an incredible session. Thank you so much for, for that last hour. So much to learn. Um, I have the task of um, closing our summit today. So I want to start off by saying, you know, on behalf of the entire team at Equality Leaders, together with our host partner, Bank of Ireland, uh, we are deeply grateful for all of you um, joining us today at our Women's Summit. A special thank you goes to our panelists who have provided us with so much learnings, much reflection, and also those actionable steps on how we can all choose to step up and how we can enable that meaningful, impactful change across our organizations and communities. Today's really afforded us that opportunity to come together and have those open, bold, inclusive dialogues. And it's also served as an opportunity to celebrate International Women's Day, served as a platform from which we've passed the mic onto women of color who continue to speak truth to power, continue to redefine an exclusionary status quo and boldly stand their ground to exist loudly without permission. Today has seen us hold space for voices all too often marginalized, a space for women of color to share their stories. Stories are how we understand ourselves, but they're also how we understand each other and it's how we understand the world. Stories remain vital to leading inclusively with that compassion and empathy that's so desperately needed. But I'd also like to say that today has been sobering in many ways, especially when one considers that only one in four C-suite leaders is a woman and only one in 20 is a woman of color. 40% of women leaders say that their diversity, equity, and inclusion work isn't acknowledged at all in performance reviews. 45% of black women working in white collar jobs here in the UK believe they're going to be overlooked for promotion despite having equal competence as their peers. And South Asian women take on average two months longer than white colleagues to land their first job after leaving education. We've spoken to trailblazing hijabis, exploring what it means to be Muslim women and leaders today and the ways in which they are reclaiming and rewriting their own identities. We've spoken to our Pan-Asian women leaders who explored the ways in which they've had to navigate their conditional inclusion, which often comes as part of that model minority myth, a myth which serves to divide people of color and specifically serve as a tool of anti-black racism. It creates that hierarchy of good immigrants versus bad immigrants, and it essentially erases Asian identities altogether. So the point here is, if organizations don't start taking action today, they're not just going to lose their women leaders, but they also risk losing that next generation of women leaders too. Black, brown, Asian women deserve more, more recognition, more access, more understanding, more pay. And there continues to be a cacophonous funeral, right, of getting a seat at the table. Actress and author Lily Singh, and we've actually included her um, TED Talk in the swag bag, which you can download from our website, so please do take a look. Lily Singh says that her goal was always a seat at the table. It's what women are conditioned to believe success is and looks like. And when the chair doesn't fit, when it doesn't reach the table, when it's wobbly, when it's full of splinters, women don't have the luxury of fixing it or finding another one. But they try anyway, and they take on that responsibility, and they shoulder that burden. Lily goes on to say, 
I've been fortunate enough to sit at a few seats at a few different tables. And what I've learned is that when you get the seat, trying to fix the seat won't fix the problem. Why? Because the table was never built for us in the first place. What is the solution? Build better tables. So let this be our challenge, our mission, a future where we have longer tables and more seats that actually work instead of fighting for a seat at the old ones that don't. A future where everyone is seated at the table equally and a future where being assigned female at birth is not a disappointment or a disadvantage because girls are encouraged, empowered and expected to do great things. So thank you so much once again, everybody, for today, for all your reflections, your comments, your questions, and we look forward to hosting you next time at one of our upcoming summits. Bye for now.